now as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest. The Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. What do you want most in a car? Economy, pride, or personal safety? Well, if you're a good driver, you can have all three with an automobile in tip-top condition. A car kept in good running condition is more economical than one that isn't. And needless to say, your personal safety is wrapped up in how well your car responds mechanically. This month, we are placing special emphasis on vehicle maintenance, which should be a year-round job. Here are the points that require careful examination. Brakes, headlights, rear and stop lights, tires, wheel alignment, exhaust system and muffler, windshield wipers, all glass, the horn and the rear view mirror. When driving, be sure you can see, steer and stop safely. It takes two to do this, you and your car. Your life and the lives of your passengers are only as safe as your car. Get a thorough checkup today. This message is brought to you as a public service. Ricky was a husky who had gone wild. He lived like a wolf, except that he always traveled alone. And he fought for his life and his food like any other animal in those great north woods. There were times, though, after he had eaten and burrowed deep in the snow for warmth, that he dreamed of other days. The best dream was of a man and a boy and a cozy cabin, a kitchen full of wonderful smells, and behind the kitchen, a storehouse where there was a wonderful bed. It was, in fact, only a canvas cot with a quilt on top of it. But Ricky loved it the first time when, as a three-month-old puppy, he had been able to scramble up and nestle in the quilt's soft folds. The feeling of the quilt came back to him as he huddled in the snow. And then he dreamed of the day when he learned that such a wonderful bed was not for him. The boy was calling from the kitchen. Ricky, where are you? Oh, 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 Ricky, you can't spin. Get down before Pa sees you. That? What did I hear? Uh, nothing, Pa. Get down, Ricky. I hear you say that the pup was on Champ's bed. Oh, he didn't know, Pa. He must be taught. Pa, oh, please, what difference does it make? After all, it's only an old cot and the quilt's all ragged and torn. I thought you understood how I felt about it. I do. Champ was the best lead dog he ever had. He won the 40-mile race for you three years in a row. He was a real champion. But he's gone now. I don't think he'd mind if some other dog used his bed. You remember what I said when Champ died? Yes, sir. But until we had another champion lead, no dog could sleep there. I haven't changed my mind, son. But Ricky may grow up to be a champion. There isn't a chance of that. He's undersized. He may grow a lot. He's a run tad. He won't even make a sled dog, let alone a lead. I love him, Pa. Of course you do, son. I don't mind you keeping him as a pet. But he must be taught his place. Pa, please don't whip him. Uh Uh-huh. Look, while the man and boy had been talking, Ricky had climbed to the bed again. Oh, Oh, Ricky, why can't you be good? Get down. He thinks you're playing. There's only one way to teach him. Ricky watched expectantly as the man took a switch down from the wall. The man pointed a finger at the bed, and Ricky happily jumped up on it. No. The switch bit into Ricky's flank. He cowered close to the quill, only to feel himself lifted yeah. bodily and thrown to the floor. No. Oh, that's enough, Paul. Yes, son, I think so. 
I hope so. Oh, Ricky, Ricky, you promise to be good, won't you? You'll never get up on Champ's bed again, will you? Never, never. That was the only time he had ever felt the sting of a whip during the time he lived with the man and the boy. But he still dreamed of the wonderful bed that was not for him. There were other dreams. But these were nightmares, really. He dreamed of the rough, red-bearded man holding the open bag in front of his nose. The appetizing smell of fresh meat coming from inside. Come on, pup. Good meat. It's all yours. All you have to do is crawl in and get it. He dreamed of his cautious exploration at the mouth of the bag. That next, that fatal step. And then the bag closing over it. He was a prisoner. No matter how much he scratched or growled, there was no escape. Hey, you shouldn't be so greedy, pup. <laughs> That next home was nothing like his first. He lived with half a dozen other dogs in a run, but there was no friendliness between them. If one wanted enough to eat, one had to fight for it, and Ricky learned how. He also learned how to work in harness. That was good, though. There was something in his blood that responded to the hard work of the trail. It was something he had been born to. Mush! Mush! <laughs> If only Red had been kinder. If only he had fed them enough. Ricky dreamed of that last terrible night when the team had shivered in the cold outside the big brick building. A long, long time, it seemed, until Red had come out carrying a heavy sack. Right, on your feet, you must. we got to get out of here fast. Fast! There were shouts and shooting as the team raced out of town. Ricky had been promoted to the lead position by that time, and Red lashed him unmercifully. Run, you ugly mother! Run! Even now, as Ricky dreamed of it, the horror of that night came back to him. The desperate plunging through the deep snow, hour after hour. And when day broke, only a short rest and one frozen fish apiece to stay their hunger. And then on and on, all day long. And Red looking back over his shoulder, and then shouting as if he were insane. He's gaining on us! That mountain's getting closer every minute! But the shouts and the sting of the whip meant nothing to Ricky now. He was beyond hearing and feeling. Only a blind instinct kept him going. Suddenly, there was an unaccountable pull, and Ricky stopped. The wheel dog had gone down. You dirty mongrel. Sham, will you? Red kicked the wheel dog and cut her out of the traces. Ricky and the other dogs crouched in the snow. All right, now you must get up. None of them responded when Red ordered them to their feet. Ricky still had a little strength left, but he knew the rest of the team was finished. They must have rest, and Ricky refused to move. Even when Red stood over him and beat him with the handle of his whip. Hey, you dirty mutt, I'll teach you to quit. I'll teach you to get me caught. I'll teach you. Red was blind with anger, but deaf as well, for he neither saw nor heard the dog team coming over the hill. And he didn't stop beating Ricky until a stern voice shouted a command. Look at you, stop that whip. Sergeant Ferguson. I'm not arresting you just yet. Take off your parka. Hey, what for? We have a personal score to settle. Those dogs have run their hearts out for you, and now you beat them. We'll see how you can take a beating. Yeah? Just you and me? No gunplay? Our fists? Yes. <laughs> it sits me fine. Ricky watched them right through a film of red, hardly knowing what was going on, but grateful that the beating had stopped. Finally, he saw Red stretched out in the snow, and the other man was speaking. You had enough? Oh, yeah. Stand up, then. I, I, I've had enough. Promise you Stand won't. up. Yeah, yeah. Hold out your hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There. Now we'll get down to the business of the law. You're under arrest for the robbery of the bank in Gold Flats. Oh, no, no, Don't I never... bother lying. You were seen leaving the bank, and the gold's there on your sled. Sit down. I'm going to see what I can do for your dogs. Uh, Ricky whimpered a little as a big man knelt beside him. Let's take a look at you, fella. Oh, not as bad as it might be. Take care of these cuts and you'll have a long rest close to a good fire before you have to move again. You look like... King, I... I'd swear that... Red, where'd you get this dog? Uh, just a stray I picked up. It's Ricky, Tad Holden's pup. You stole him over a year ago. Uh, he was running loose. Ricky, boy, I'm sure of it. You're going home, fella. <laughs> And Ricky did go back to the cabin where Tad and Matt Holden had lived. But another man was living in the cabin now. I'm renting from Matt, Sergeant. He and Tad went up to Dominion Creek about two months ago. Well, this is their dog, Ricky. I'm sure of it. If that's Ricky, he's sure grown a lot. Look at the markings. Yeah. 
Just like old champ. But where'd he get the scars? From Red Brandon, who stole him. That's the bank robber you just brought in. That's right. Twenty years, they say, he got. He deserves every one of them. And he gave you a rough time, didn't he, Ricky? But your trouble should be over now, boy. I'll take you to headquarters, and the next time I go to Dominion... Creek, Why don't you I... leave him here, Sergeant? There's plenty of room in the runs at headquarters. I'd like to have him, and Matt and Tad will be staying with me when they come in for supplies. That should be soon now, the weather's breaking. Let me keep him here. All right, John. After all, it is his home. Of course it is. Welcome back, Ricky. <laughs> but it wasn't the same as it used to be. The man who lived in the cabin was hardly ever there. And in a few days, Ricky was lonely. A week passed, and spring was in the air. One evening, Ricky nosed open the door of the cabin and howled at the full moon. There were answering howls from the woods beyond the town. The call of the wild places was irresistible, and Ricky ran down the main street and into the forest. He never returned to Dawson. He learned to hunt, and every new day was a glorious adventure while the summer lasted. Winter was another story. He nearly starved that first winter, but summer came again. And now he was spending his second winter in the wilds. He woke from his dreams hungry, and he poked his nose out of his snow burrow. The temperature had dropped to a bitter 50 below, and a blizzard was blotting out the land. Ricky huddled back in his burrow. He stayed there for 24 hours until the storm was over. When he crawled out, there was no living creature to be seen. The cold bit through his heavy coat. But it was more than hunger he felt now. There was a fear in his heart. A fear that nowhere in this silent world would he be able to find food. A fear of starvation. He raised his head to the pale winter sun and howled. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. The bases are loaded. It's the last of the night. The two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. And ball is the grand slam home run. Be right there in the ballpark and see a grand slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Paco 10. The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat or Puff rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston and Constable Downey were returning from a northern patrol. They'd made an early camp because one of the sergeant's dogs had cut his foot. <laughs> how is it, Sergeant? Not too bad. It's a clean cut. Can't figure out how he did it. Must have been a sharp stone. You'll have to ride the sled for the next few days, Blackie boy. How's the stew coming? Uh, that's ready. I'll start dishing it out. What's the matter, King? King had left the other dogs around the campfire and was standing at the edge of the woods. Must be something in there. Come on, King. We'll investigate. <sighs> Ricky crouched in the snow watching the sergeant and King as they walked toward him. His instinct was to run, but his hunger made him stay. And then suddenly, instead of growling, the big silvery dog was running toward him, barking a welcome. <laughs> Recognition came to Ricky. He had met this man and dog before. A dog, King, but wild as any wolf. In spite of the friendly tone, panic overcame Ricky and he bolted. Hey, that was a dog, Sergeant. Yes, and I know which dog, too. Ricky. You remember old champ Holden's dog? Of course. This was the last of his pups. Red Brandon stole him and I brought him back to Dawson, but he ran away. Well, he's gone again. I have a hunch he won't go far. He's hungry. We'll see if we can coax him into camp. Ricky hadn't gone far, and when darkness fell, he crept back toward the camp. All the dogs except the big lead had burrowed in the snow, 
And halfway between the edge of the trees and the campfire, there was a tin plate filled with a savory stew. Unguarded, his for the taking. If he only dared show himself. He started toward it. Neither the dog nor the men paid any attention to him. The aroma of the stew was overpowering. He crawled on and on until he reached the plate. It was not until he began to eat that one of the men spoke his name. There's no need to be afraid, Ricky. That stew was meant for you, boy. We're your friends. We'd like you to stay with us. The last of the stew was bolted down, and still the quiet voice kept on, and Ricky didn't move. Wouldn't you like to come a little closer? Over here by the fire where it's nice and warm? Don't be afraid, Ricky. Don't be afraid, boy. At the sound of the words, a dog's age-old longing for human companionship swept over Ricky. His heart was filled with a yearning for that young master he had lost so long ago. The boy he loved, and who had loved him. Perhaps this man with a kind voice could lead him back to the boy. Ricky crept closer and closer to the fire. It was the day before the midwinter race for 40 miles at Dawson. And the cafes in 40 Mile were crowded. Matt Holden was talking with some of his friends in one of them when Link Carter pushed his way through the crowd to his side. You think you're going to win the race tomorrow, don't you, Matt? Well, I think I have a good chance. Hey, Want to bet? My team against yours? I would if I had any money. Well, you've got a claim. How about your claim against a thousand dollars? Oh, now my claim's worth more than that. Well, it isn't worth anything until you pipe water up there. Well, that's true enough. Well, all right, I'll take it. Man, well, it's all right. I know what I'm doing. Here, I have the deed to the claim right here, Link. We let the bartender hold the stakes. Come on. That's a bet. After the stakes were posted, Matt tried to explain his actions to his friend. I have a good chance of winning. Klondike's the best lead dog I've had since old champ. Yes, but taking a chance with your claim. Link was right about that. I need money or it's no good to me. But there's the prize. That's $500. I need that to pay Tad's hospital bill. How is the boy? Well, they say the operation was a success, but he doesn't seem to gain strength. You need more medicine than doctoring. I sure hope you win, Matt. Matt, I've been looking all over for you. Why, what's the matter? It's Klondike. He's sick. Sick? You don't have a chance of winning without Klondike, Matt. Come on, John. Show me where Klondike is. All right. Matt stayed with his lead all that night. It was nearly two o'clock when the door of the shed opened and Sergeant Preston stepped inside. Hello, Matt. Hello, Sergeant. How is he? He's better, but... You won't be able to work tomorrow. What are you going to do? I have to race. I have too much at stake not to. I made a foolish bet. Yes, I heard about it. But things may not be as bad as they seem. No prize to pay a hospital bill. No claim. I don't know. I have a good lead you can use. Oh? No. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if I could substitute King for Klondike? Oh, it's impossible, Sergeant. The rules of the race say that a contestant must own as well as driver's team. But you do own this lead I'm talking about. I don't understand. You will when you see him. Come on and take a look. Sergeant Preston had persuaded Ricky to work in Blackie's place. When the team reached 40 Mile, a dog took it as a matter of course that he should be fed and turned into a run with the other members of the team. And now, as the sergeant and Matt approached the run, he woke up at the sound of King's barking. He recognized the sergeant at once, but when he realized who was with him, he nearly went wild. What's the matter with that dog? He's glad to see you. To see me? Look at him, Matt. Sergeant, uh, am I am I looking at a ghost? Well, he's a dead ringer for old champ, only larger. He's the one... He's the pup you used to call a runt. Ricky! He hasn't forgotten his name, and he hasn't forgotten you. Go on in and say hello to him, Matt. Oh, dog, go on. Hello, Ricky. Hello, fella. Glad to see you. <laughs> Where'd you find him this time, Sergeant? In the woods north of here. He was starving. Well, he sure doesn't look it. Oh, he's been eating well for the last few days. Oh, nice fella. I won't say he's in best condition, but the 40 miles from here to Dawson won't bother him. Has he been trained? Fred Brandon did that. He's a good lead, Matt. You can take my word for it. I shall. Ricky, will Tad be glad to see you? When am I? Oh, when you can win for us tomorrow, Ricky. He'll do his best. All the luck in the world, Matt. Constable Downey and I are leaving for Dawson first thing in the morning, so we'll be at the finish line. Do you know who'll be there with us? Who? If the doctor will allow it. Pat. Well, I guess that'll be all right if he's bundled up enough. There couldn't be any better medicine for him than to see you and Ricky coming home oh, first. But, Sergeant, if we should lose the disappointment... You won't. Somehow, I feel sure of that. Good luck, Matt. <laughs> We'll 
continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, how about you and your whole family going to the baseball game? You'll have the time of your lives. Seeing those smashing home runs, watching exciting double plays and strikeouts, eating peanuts and cracker jacks. Why not go this very week? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yep, admission is absolutely free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. Free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker Popped Wheat, Quaker Popped Rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. In Quaker Paco 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell mom you want to eat lots of Quaker Popped Wheat or Popped Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat or Quaker Paco 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. Now to continue. Ricky was still wild enough to be terrified by the crowd of men and dogs around the starting line the following day. Now uh, there's no need to tremble that way, Ricky fella. These people won't hurt you. And in just a few minutes, we'll be on our way. The teams were lined up and the starting gun sounded. <laughs> The shot added to Ricky's terror, but the terror lent wings to his feet, and he dashed into the lead. There was no way Matt could control his speed, though, and Matt knew that such a pace could never be maintained for the whole distance. He pleaded with Ricky. Hold on, boy. Easy, does it. Long way to go. Easy, Ricky. Nothing could stop Ricky, and before long, he was half a mile ahead of the next team, and only then was Matt able to slow him down. Matt was afraid now, afraid that the initial dash had taken too much of the team's strength. Still, as the hours passed and mile after mile was covered, Ricky maintained his lead with no sign of faltering. It was not until Dawson was in sight that Matt realized the team behind was gaining fast. It's Link Carter! Must Ricky! Matt could see and hear the crowd of men at the finish line. And then he understood it was more than fatigue that was troubling Ricky. He was afraid of the crowd. He wanted to swerve aside instead of driving straight on toward the finish. Turn, boy! Turn! Link Carter grew closer and closer, his whip cracking. And Matt's team was demoralized by their leader's actions, by his swerving from left to right. Ricky knew that he shouldn't let his team pass him. He understood the urgency in Matt's voice, but the yelling of the crowd at the finish line seemed to paralyze his muscles. He was powerless against his fear. And then, with only a hundred yards to go, and Carter's lead on nearly even terms with him, Ricky heard a familiar voice above all the others. It belonged to the man who wore the red coat, his friend. The sergeant's shout was all Ricky needed. His fear disappeared. His friend wouldn't let anyone hurt him. With new strength, new courage, Ricky charged toward the finish. In a matter of seconds, he had opened daylight between Matt Sled and Carter's team, and he flashed across the finish line, the winner. But he didn't stop there. He ran straight on to the sergeant. And only when he reached him did he recognize the boy who was perched on the sergeant's shoulder. It was his young master. The sergeant lowered the boy to the ground. Ricky had no thought for the yelling all around him now. Tad's arms were around his neck, and he whimpered happily. How many times had he dreamed of this moment to be reunited with his master? Ricky, boy, you won! And it wasn't long before he was in the kitchen, he remembered, with the sergeant, Matt, young Tad, and the big lead dog they called King. Ricky listened to the talk. So the doctor says you may come home, Tad. Oh, sure. There's no sense in my staying in the hospital anymore. Well, you've improved so much in just a few days. I, I can hardly believe it. Oh, I had to get Will so I could see you win. And when the sergeant came in today and said that Ricky was coming home... The cure was complete. Good news, son. But that isn't the only good news. I made a bet up in 40 miles. But before Ricky I knew, was tired. And the thought came to him of the wonderful oh, bed out in the storeroom. No, was it still there? He decided to investigate, and he trotted through the open door. Yes, the bed was still there, and it looked as inviting as ever. Would it matter so much if just for a moment he should lie down on that quilt? The temptation was too great. He jumped up and settled down. He closed his eyes, only for a moment, but he was tired, and he couldn't help dozing. This is where you've been. Ricky. Ricky looked up into his master's face and Matt's and the sergeant's. And then he lowered his head and started to crawl down from the bed. Oh, no, now hold on there, Ricky. Stay, fella, stay. If that's where you want to sleep, 
You've earned the right to it, boy. You sure have. <laughs> what had happened? Good boy. Instead of being punished, Tad and Matt were patting him. Ricky didn't understand. But for some reason, it was all right now to sleep nice on the bed. Stella. And Ricky was glad. It had been a long trip home. He was tired. And this was a wonderful bed. The last thing he remembered as he fell asleep was the sergeant speaking and King barking. Yes, King. This case is closed. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Young America keeps his musical knowledge up to date by listening to Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond. Every Saturday, Johnny presents a roundup of the platters that are making musical history from coast to coast. In addition, he brings such outstanding big-name guests as Teresa Brewer, the Fontaine Sisters, and Bill Haley's Comets. Guest disc jockeys from every section of the country appear regularly to report to listeners on the top tunes in each of their hometown areas. And interesting teenagers appear on Phonorama Time to bring their viewpoints on what young America is thinking about and talking about in music and other fields as well. Everyone loves Johnny Desmond, and everyone loves his Phonorama Time show. So gather your friends and fellow music fans around this Saturday and every Saturday for the musical session you can't afford to miss. Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond on Mutual over most of these stations. Inspector Conrad's office at Mounted Police Headquarters. Captain Ames, how soon can your troop be ready to ride? In half an hour, sir. What's up? It's serious. The Northwest Mounted needs your help. I've just had a message from Sergeant Preston from the trading post at Tanglewood. Yes? The post has been surrounded. By Indians? Yes. Karnak is leading them. There are only three men with the sergeant inside the post. They'll hold out as long as they can. But the situation is desperate. We'll leave at once, sir. The sergeant and his three companions have fought off the Indian attacks all through the night. But Karnak is determined to capture the trading post and its store of rifles and ammunition. Can help reach the little garrison in time, or must they die fighting? Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.